Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and we'll be talking about the 5 sleeper OP picks and builds that you should be abusing for some free LP. You definitely know the popular OP picks and builds since they're all over social media, including our very own YouTube channel. But in this video, we'll be looking at some of the lesser known builds and picks today. We'll be starting off things with the least support. This isn't just some cheesy pick that looks good when you stomp in low elo. It's a tried and true tactic that does well even in high Korean solo queue. So if it works at the highest levels of gameplay on the second most competitive solo queue ladder in the world, then you know it's legit. And it's not that surprising when you actually look at how it works. Think of how scary it is to play against a standard CC support, like Leona or Nautilus, especially when they're paired with a strong early game ADC like Tristana, Lucian, or Draven. Getting hit by their CC is almost always going to force you to flash, and if you don't have that, there's a good chance that you're dead. Now imagine that you're laning against the same bot lane, but instead of Nautilus or Leona, it's a champion that can still CC you, but can also burst you for more than double their damage. Oh, and said champion can drop tower aggro, making dives super easy and doable as early as level 3, though you probably won't be able to do that to them quite that early without your jungler coming to help. And if all that sounds broken to you, then maybe you should consider giving Elise a try. A really strong selling point to me for Elise support is that she puts her opponents in a damned if they do, damned if they don't situation when it comes to picking a target to fight. If they go on your ADC, you easily have the damage to go onto their ADC and solo him. But if they go on you, you can pretty easily repel away to a minion to make an escape. Out of lane, Elise support plays pretty similar to Elise jungle, minus the clearing camps part. You aren't exactly a superb 5v5 champion, but you're more than capable of making picks, so what great the team mains to do that before objective fights? If full on 5v5s do happen, just use your percentage based damage to front to back as best as you can. Now let's look at the build that you'll be going for for Elise support. For your runes, run Electrocute, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Nimbus Cloak, and Scorch, with the set runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. For your items, start with the Relic Shield, and then rush Sorcerer's Shoes. Just the Magic Pen from those alone will give you super high kill potential. After that, start working towards your Night Harvester, and if you need it, pick up an Oblivion Orb. Then you want to buy Zanya's Hourglass and then Avoid Staff. If the game goes on long enough, you can either upgrade the Oblivion Orb to Morellonomicon, or ideally, you can sell that orb and just go for a Wardstone. While Elise's damage is pretty insane at all stages of the game, it gets more difficult to actually get off that damage at later stages because of how many wards your opponents will have down. That means you want to try and snowball as hard and as fast as possible. So with that being said, you could edit your build by going for Magi's over Zhonya's and really trying to close it out fast. Part of what makes Sleeper OB picks so successful is the fact that nobody plays them. Objectively speaking, they may not be better than or even as good as the most popular picks, but when your opponents don't know how to play against them, you get that extra edge in the fight. But that alone isn't quite enough to win you all of your solo queue games. You also need to have the skills to get those early leads, and the know-how to actually use those leads to win your games. And that's exactly what we're trying to teach you at ProGuides.com. Our top tier coaches over on ProGuides.com can really help you figure out exactly what you need to work on. They're available 24-7, so it's never really a bad time to come try one out. I promise, there's at least one that specializes in exactly what you're looking for. These guys have spent years reaching the top of the ladder, so why wouldn't you want to steal all their solo queue tips and tricks? You can find the link for our website down in the description box below. Now let's get back on topic. Our next sleeper pick is Karma Top. To be honest, I think Karma Top is just infinitely better than Karma Support. In fact, I think Karma Support is one of the most overrated picks in the game. It's not like it has a horribly negative win rate, as she usually sits around a 50% win rate. But locking in such a mid pick is kind of a waste of time when you could be picking one of the most busted enchanters in the game like Lulu or Janna. Her only real use is as a hard counter to Morgana. So what makes her so bad as a support, and why is top lane better? As a support, she's definitely a really strong lane bully. She wins almost all lanes, but she wins by poking and forcing people under their turret, and doesn't really have the capacity to force all lanes for kills. As a result, the enemy ADC is able to get most of their farm. As the game goes on, Karma's damage falls off hard, and she just becomes a shield bot. Her most useful function is spamming Mantra E in fights, and at this point, most enemy support champions are way, way more useful, and easily makes up for the slight gap your ADC has over the enemy ADC. Now let's look at what makes her actually work as a top laner. In a meta so heavily dominated by bruisers and juggernauts, being able to win is usually a huge factor in the top lane. Champs in those classes aren't exactly useful when behind, since they have little to no utility to offer. They either have enough stats to roll teamfights, or they don't. Karma's lane bully identity allows her to keep those champions down, and once you get out of the laning phase, you're able to group up and just be an auxiliary support in teamfights. At this point, you'll be way, way more useful than your lane opponent would be in a 5v5, so you should be able to strong arm most objectives with your team. Now, let's look at the full build that you want for Karma top lane. Furry runes run Airy, Mana Flow, Transcendence, Gathering Storm, Conditioning or Bone Plating, and Revitalize. The stat runes being Ability Haste, Adaptive Force, and either Armor or Magic Resist. For your items, you'll start with the Corrupting Potion, and then rush Lucidity Boots. Once those are done, work towards your support core of Moonstone Renewer and Redemption. The rest of the build can be flexed to your game's needs. There are a lot of options, from tankier choices like Frozen Heart and Spirit Visage, more supportive ones like Staff of Flowing Water and Ardent, or utility picks like Camp Tank Putrefire or Anathema's Chains. Next up, we have Talon Jungle. 
we actually dropped Talon pretty hard all the way down to the seeds here after they nerfed his clear speed. But with the new lethality build, he does a lot better than we thought. When you go for the Conqueror, Gorgic, or Talon, you're obviously more gauged towards being a bruiser than an assassin. The slower tempo he has now makes snowballing as a bruiser a lot more difficult. But when you go lethality, you snowball just as hard as any assassin would. Instead of farming camps, you could be a lot more aggressive and focus on farming enemy champions instead. Serrated Dirk alone is a big enough spike that you can immediately start invading the enemy jungle and looks to one shot your opponent if you can catch them out on a camp. Obviously, lethality is a little bit more high risk, high reward, but that's how assassins really should be anyway. And when you actually pull it off, it feels so much sweeter. So now let's take a look at the build in full. For your runes, run First Strike, Magical Footwear, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter, with the sat runes being a double adaptive force and armor. For your items, start with a Hail Blade, and then on your first bag, make sure that you're picking up Tier 1 boots and some Long Swords. Then work towards your Eclipse, Yumus, and Lucidity boots. After that, you can go for Death Stance, Sorella's Grudge, and either Guardian Angel, Mama Mordius, or Edge of Night. Karma isn't the only support solo laner that we have for you today. Another really good one is Lulu. She works as a top laner as well, but she's especially good in the mid lane, where she does an amazing job of shutting down melee champions hard. So, if you're somebody that struggles against bad volatile assassin matchups, this one may be a good pick for you to add to your pool. Despite being an enchanter, Lulu is a super aggressive lane bully. You'll want to constantly harass your opponents with the pixie empowered auto attacks, and look to hit them with your big EQ when you're free to do so. Be careful about using your W just to speed yourself into range. Oftentimes, it's better to hold it for polymorph. And one last thing before we get into the build, Lulu mid is definitely an amazing counterpick to a lot of champions, but she's awful against Sari. Since Sari is both of the best and one of the most popular picks at the moment, you do not want to pick Lulu when she's up. You need to ban Ari, or at least see what you're up against before you pick her, which we recommend anyway. Now let's take a look at the build. For your runes, run Airy, Manaflow Band, Transcendence, Scorcher Gathering Storm, Biscuit, and Time Warp Tonic, with the stat runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor or Magic Resist. For your items, start with the Corrupting Potion, grab an early Dark Seal, and then work towards a Shirelia's Reverie, Lucidity Boots, and Ardent Sensor. After that, upgrade some Magi's, and if you need it, grab a Zhonya's. If you don't need Zhonya's, grab Cosmic Drive or Chemtic Putrefire instead, and your last item should be Rabbit on Seth Cap. While Lulu mid may not be a crazy 1v9 pick like some other sleeper OB picks could be, it's no doubt that it's super useful to have a specific pocket pick to answer otherwise tough to win matchups. I'd rather have something that gets consistent results than doing a coin flip on a skill matchup like Yasuo or Irelia any day. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What are some of the other off-meta counterpicks that you use to win hard lanes? Another one I really like is Rennington into Assassin mid lane. While I do think he's straight up garbage as a top laner, Rennington mid stomps assassins and keeps them from ever being useful. But that's just me, we want to hear from you, so let us know your answers in the comments down below. Now without further ado, let's get to our last pick. Finishing off our list, we have the right way to build a Lowey. A Lowey's a pretty rare champion, and when she is picked, a lot of people just seem to go for the same cookie cutter build every single game. They just build Divine Sunderer into Cerex and full tank. That may work against tankier foes, but that's just because a Lowey's kit is just so good at stopping them anyway. You could basically build whatever you want and win against them. The build that we'll be going over today is the one that will give you much more consistent results against a variety of opponents. That way you can even beat up a squishier, higher damage champion that may otherwise give you some trouble. The build is as follows. For your runes, run Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Bone Plating, Revitalize, Presence of Mind, and Last Stand. With double adaptive force and armor or magic resist. For your items, start with the Corrupting Potion, then Rush Holebreaker. Once you have that, you'll grab either Steel Caps or Merc Treads and then go for a Trinity Force. This mythic is a lot better than Divine Sunderer, unless both the enemy top laner and jungler are both beefy champions that will give you a lot of value with Divine. After that, grab Death Stance and make your last two item situational ones. Good options are Spare Visage, Thornmail, Serex Gage, and Maul Memordius. Just be sure that you only buy one item with a lifeline passive. At 6 items, this build doesn't look all that different from the regular one, but rushing Hopebreaker and going Trinity Force over Sunderer makes a huge difference. Trust me. And that wraps things up for our Sleeper OP builds that you don't want to miss out on for patch 12.6. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure you sub so you never miss out on our meta guides, and you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember, let us know what your secret counterpick to a tough matchup is in the comments down below. And one last thing, don't forget to check us out on our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss things further or just hang out and be part of the community. And if you want to see me outside of pro guides, please follow me on twitch.tv slash Nathan underscore ING, and I would love to see you guys there. Anyway, I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.